Hello everyone, I'm Brent Butler with Icon Boats and today we want to go over uh, setting up your electronics. Once you get your boat, there's still some stuff that, uh, that you still have to do once you get to the water and uh, we're going to talk specifically about Garmin. Uh, we brought in Lee Means with Garmin. Lee, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to have Lee go through the process of uh, things you'd need to know, the how-tos, uh, you know, setting up uh, your Garmin units once you receive it from the dealer or if you're that dealer rigging it for a customer, um, once you get to the lake, there's still some settings and, and things that you need to know. Okay, folks, one of the first things you're going to need to do when you get your boat in the water and you've got your Garmin set up here is that you're going to need to calibrate your heading sensor. This boat comes equipped with our Steadicast heading sensor. When you get it on the water, there's a couple things you're going to need to keep in mind when you're calibrating it. One, you're going to want to be in a quiet cove somewhere or very calm water, not around a lot of boat wake. Boat wake. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have the ability to drive at a little distance for the second part of the step. So the very first part of the step, we're going to calibrate the compass and that's going to require us to turn the boat in a circle one and a half times. Now keep in mind, Garmin's going to walk you through this with their prompts on the screen. So up here at the top, we're going to go ahead and calibrate the compass. See there, it tells you what to do. Turn the boat one and a half times in either direction and keep the boat level and steady. Again, that's the big key is you don't want to be in rough water when you're doing these calibrations. So when we're ready, it's going to select begin. We're going to hit begin and we're going to turn the boat in a circle one and a half times. Probably advisable to do it at, at um, a slow speed. Okay, now that we've got the compass calibrated on the steady cast, we're going to hit OK here. And the next thing we're going to do is the auto heading alignment. So we're going to select that and it's going to tell you bring the boat to a cruising speed at a constant heading with at least 45 seconds of hazard free water ahead. When you're ready, press begin. Let her go. Okay, we've come off of plane. We've completed the auto alignment there. It says success. We're going to hit OK and then we're good to go on that part of the step. Um, so we've got the steady cast calibrated now. Um, just real quick to let you know what you've got in this system here with the Garmin and the Icon is that we're running the GT8 in-hole transducer. So that's going to give you your traditional sonar that we see here. And then you've also got the GT36 on the transom. The GT36 is going to give you your side view and your clear view. So there's your, there's your um, side view, and then you got clear view. And of course, you can um, change this to however you like as far as your personal preferences with colors, with frequencies. You can do custom screen combinations. So I just mentioned custom combos, right? So you've got four favorite buttons here on the side of the Echo Map Ultra 2s. So you can come down to combo screens here. We've got several that are preset. So if you just wanted to do like an all sonar one right here, for instance, you've got 2D, you've got the clear view, you've got the side view. Um, you can bring it back up from the home screen there. And you'll notice with our new setup here as the new user interface is that all of this kind of stays on the screen while you're doing it. So it's kind of integrated it where you don't have to back out of certain things anymore. So you've got those options all on the bottom. Now, if you wanted to go over all the way down and create your own custom combo, say you want to set something up for your navigation mode, you want to add some mapping here, maybe to this side, you'll come to charts, we'll do fishing charts since we're in a bass fishing boat, and then we'll also add some sonar just so we have some, maybe some traditional 2D for when guys are running on, plat on plane and whatnot. So we're going to select the built-in transducers there, and then we'll hit, um, I'm going to actually slide this over because I want to see a little bit more of the mapping and not so much of the sonar. I just want to kind of have a sliver of sonar over to the side. We're going to hit done. Um, you can also rename these. It's going to automatically give you a number or something. But there you go. You've got your, um, you've got your split screen combo here. And then if you want to save this for your first favorite, you come over to this number one here. We're going to just hold this down. Page save to shortcut key one. Okay. So whenever we're in any other screen other than this one, we can always come back. For instance, we'll just go to this page here. We can always come back to this one and press the one and it'll bring us back to our favorites there on the custom number one shortcut key. 
All right, folks, so we're gonna move up to the front of the boat here, and we're gonna talk about the electronics we got on the bow. Again, this is a custom LX Icon boat. You can order these with different electronics packages. Obviously, I'm the Garmin guy, and love to talk about Garmin. But one of the first things we're gonna need to do, again, in the setup stage, at the calibration is, we're going to need to calibrate the trolling motor. Your, your Garmin Force trolling motor is gonna come with a remote. It takes two AA batteries. The remote does float, by the way. But we're gonna turn this on, and there's a process to setting up the remote. You've gotta calibrate the remote first before you can calibrate the trolling motor itself. Okay, once you get your remote unpackaged and you put your two AA batteries in the back of it, you're gonna get your remote turned on, and this is the menu button right here. You're gonna select the menu, you're gonna scroll down to settings, go over, there's gonna be trolling motor and remote. Again, we've gotta get the remote calibrated first. So we're coming over to the remote control, and we're gonna hit over to the right, come down to calibrate, and we're gonna calibrate the trolling mo the re remote for the trolling motor. And again, it's gonna walk you through the steps, step by step on how to do this. So once you're ready to calibrate it, I recommend bringing it down to probably the, the floor of the boat here. So we're gonna calibrate the remote. It's gonna tell you to slowly turn it in a direction. I already have it laying on the carpet, right? So we're gonna sit start, and it wants us to rotate it until prompted. We got the green light on that one. We're gonna hit the next, and it wants us to roll it. We got that part, we're gonna hit next. And before we do that, I kinda of like to bring it up because I, I do know what the next step's gonna be, but it's gonna want us to flip it. So we're gonna hit next. Got it. So now that we've calibrated this part, we're gonna hit okay. The next thing we're gonna do is calibrate the trolling motor compass. Okay, all right, now that we've got the remote calibrated, we're gonna come down to the menu again. We're gonna scroll down to settings, go over, so we get trolling motor, and then we're gonna hit over. Trolling motor's not detected, right? Well, we've gotta put the trolling motor in the water. You gotta have the trolling motor in the water. You've gotta be on your lake. You can't do this from your garage. So we're gonna come over here, Got the trolling motor in the water. Okay, folks, side note, if for some reason, and this, I wanna stress that this is a big if, because your remote should come paired with the trolling motor itself, but I just kinda of wanna walk through a little troubleshooting issue that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. If for some reason your remote does get disconnected from your unit, or if you got it and it's brand new out of the box, and it's not, it's showing that it's not connected, you need to pair the unit. And how to do that is, you're gonna come down here to the trolling motor itself, you're gonna hit the power button three times. One, two, three. That's gonna put it in discoverable mode, if you will. So once that blue light's on the trolling motor, you come to the menu here. We're gonna scroll down to the settings, we're gonna to go to the remote control, and then we're gonna scroll down to the pairing. Then you're gonna hit pair. Pair with the trolling motor, start, and let it do its thing. Pairing complete, all three green lights there, pairing complete. So again, that's just wanna stress that that's a big if, that in case your remote ever comes unpaired, or if you get one brand new out of the box, and it's not paired, that's the process for pairing the remote. Now that we got the remote calibrated, we're gonna to need to calibrate the compass and the trolling motor, and that's done so that you can have what everybody's favorite feature is, anchor lock mode. So again, we're gonna to go to the menu button, we're gonna scroll down to settings, go over to trolling motor, from trolling motor, we're gonna scroll down to calibrate, we're gonna hit calibrate, the compass. Now, you wanna be in the area, again, where you're hazard free, cause you're gonna spin the boat in a circle. So again, make sure that you try to keep a tight circle. You know, it, it just needs to go from either left to right, right to left, pick one, whichever one you wanna go. Do like a clock, spin around in a circle. Um, again, making sure that you don't have a bunch of wake um, or, ha or any kind of hazards or something that the boat might bump into. So now we're gonna hit the cal calibrate the compass. It's gonna tell you what you need to do on the screen right there and then we're gonna hit it over and it's gonna begin.
All right, now that we've got the calibrated compass, you can use everybody's favorite feature, which is anchor lock mode. So we've got our remote for our trolling motor paired. Again, I know a lot of bass guys might not be big into the remote, but just know that that remote is part of the initial installation and setup and calibration process. You've got to work through all that to get to probably what you're more excited about is setting up your live scope. So we've got our trolling motor deployed. Okay, so from any screen here again, we can come back down into the home screen. Um, we're gonna go to sonar here and we're gonna select the live scope icon, okay? From here, we're gonna go to the menu. From the menu, we're gonna go to sonar setup then we're gonna to go to installation. From installation, we're gonna hit calibrate compass. And so just so you're aware again, just like setting up our heading sensor that we did earlier, you wanna make sure you're at least in some calm water and that you don't have any obstacles or, or hazards around you. All right, we're gonna to go to installation and then we're gonna calibrate our compass. Calibrate compass, again, it's gonna tell us like what we did with the heading sensor to turn the boat one and a half times. And then we're gonna hit begin. So we're gonna go ahead and stand up and get onto our foot pedal. Begin. Okay, we just completed the step of calibrating the compass. Calibration status, success. Magnetic environment, 95%. Spin quality, 84%. Don't get too hung up on this part here where it doesn't say 100%. You wanna get into the mid to high 80s on spin quality for sure. You do wanna to try to get it at a better spin quality than 84%. The magnetic environment is at 95%, that's really good. So again, this is a part of calibrating the compass that sometimes people get confused about because they're not seeing 100 percentiles right here. And you're not gonna expect it to see 100 percentile. What you wanna see is a passing grade. We've got a great passing grade here with the magnetic and spin quality. And again, you probably already noticed that your live scope is working out of the box. Previous live scope versions like the LVS32 required more of this step and it was a little bit more intense, but it's mainly just getting the compass calibrated so that it knows which which auto zone you have it in. Do you have it in forward or do you have it in down? And this calibration is a success and it's gonna allow us to quickly clip and turn. Maybe if we wanna put it in perspective mode, it's gonna allow us to do that. It's gonna allow us to put in forward mode. It's gonna allow us to put in down mode. And it's gonna allow us to do that in auto. So auto, it'll detect when you do that. So for example, when you pull up the trolling motor, we've got it set in forward mode right now. That bracket down there on the end the perspective mode bracket comes with the Live Scope Plus these days, the LVS34. So you no longer have to buy that as an accessory, it comes with it. But if you were in the shallow water, say 11 foot or less, you can turn and twist that Live Scope and put it in perspective mode. And perspective mode really does best in shallow water. Now that we've got our Live Scope all calibrated and set up with the compass, there's some things you're gonna see here. And I just wanna add a caveat that there is no magic silver bullet with setting up a live scope. It is a personal preference thing, but there are some settings that you can at least get started with. We do tell people we work and strive at Garmin to make things out of the box, easy to use, plug and play. But of course there's exceptions to every rule. Now we've, what we've got down here is your settings as far as range and depth. So you'll notice that they're on autos. So those are autos might not be how you want to fish on your particular body of water. So for instance, the live scope, as you probably heard with the plus version, is really good out to about 100 feet. So we're going to bring that one in to 100 feet. We're going to leave that. And again, depending on your body of water, there's always exceptions to these. These are just suggestions, is the depth range. You typically want to have the depth range set on auto if you're on a body of water that has multiple depths of depths in it so for instance on the tennessee river you're going to have the main channels which might be 60 feet deep and then that can go really quickly up to two feet but if you're fishing let's say 15 foot say that's the sweet spot that's the pattern for the day you might want to adjust how how deep you are over here on the right and once you know you're in a certain depth so it looks like we're a little over 40 foot right here where we're sitting you might want to go a few feet past that depth zone to kind of give you some play, if you will, in case any of the, the body of the water that you're on the floor begins to rise or go, or, or go shallower or, or deeper. 
Now here's the most talked about feature on a live scope. It's the infamous gain setting, right? We're gonna leave that on auto because it's at 74%. With the new live scope plus compared to an LVS 32, we're really able to get that gain cranked up and that gives us better quality images. But for now, we are gonna leave that on auto. Now if you come down here to the menu button, go into sonar setup, you got appearance, and there's all kinds of color schemes that people like. And the reason for that is we got different color schemes is because people's eyes are all individual to themselves. And some people, quite frankly, it's very common in men to have color blindness. So certain colors, reds maybe, don't show up so well for some people. It's gonna come default in, in this, this color mode that we have here. But what my favorite color mode for my personal self is the black emerald. So now that we've gotten through like setting up a navigation page, which is our favorite short key number one here, we want to kind of go into a fish hunting mode. So we've got our side imaging set up, we've got our clear view are down there, and then we have our traditional sonar set up here. So we're going to go ahead and save this as shortcut key number two. Okay. So again, we can toggle through all these different shortcut keys here, but as we're side in as we're hunting along here looking at our side imaging we're going to kind of keep an eye out and see if anything catches our attention if there's a school of fish if there's some structure that we might notice that's worth fishing all right looks like we've got an old road bed right here there are some fish on the ledge but that's what you're going to see with our gt36 transducer on the back of an icon lee Again, thank you for coming thank out. You, Brent. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a pleasure to ha have you in the house, you know, to go over uh, Garmin products and everything else. Be sure and check us out online, iconboats.com. We got the menu bar top right. You just click down. We got a lot of uh, how to educational videos, uh, which will link you uh, to our YouTube channel. And uh, be sure and check us out, iconboats.com.